The problem goes on to ask about the final velocity as opposed to the initial velocity of the object or the cart, uh, whatever it is, as it moves the 1.6 meters down the incline. Well, again, we find that in moving 1.6 meters down the incline, the work done by the net force is 0.024 joules. Now, we know that the net force is equal to the work done by the parallel force plus uh, the, the, the I'm sorry, the net force is the parallel component of the weight. I'm reading a small w as work, and it's hard to distinguish those two symbols. Uh, I'm going to probably start doing something fancy with the capital W. Matter of fact, this would be a great time to do that. Let's make uh, work just a little fancier so we don't make, well, might still make that mistake. Okay, I think we got... I thought there was another one here, but I guess not. Okay. Again, net force is the parallel component of the weight plus the frictional force. Um, so the work done by the net force is equal to the work done by the parallel force plus the work done by the frictional force. Simply because uh, if we multiply F net delta S, it's the same as mu multiplying uh, the parallel component plus the frictional component times delta S. By the distributive law, you're going to get the parallel component times delta S plus the frictional component times delta S, which is going to give you the work done by the parallel force and the work done by the frictional force. So this follows just by very simple rules of algebra that you're very familiar with. So we also know that the work done by the net force is equal to the change in kinetic energy, and you should uh, be able to derive that, at least from the equations of uniformly accelerated motion and Newton's second law. Okay? Uh, and uh, that being true, then we know that the work done by the net force is equal to the change in the quantity, one-half mv squared, which is equal to one-half m times the final velocity squared minus one-half m times the initial velocity squared. Now, there are a couple of cases, I believe. I have to go back and read the problem, but I'm going to finish this little blurb before I do. Uh, if V0 is 0, then the change in kinetic energy is equal to 1 half MVF squared. Why? Because V0 is 0, so the negative 1 half MV0 squared is just minus 0, and we're just left with 1 half MVF squared. Now that makes intuitive sense. If you start at velocity 0, you've got no kinetic energy. So the only kinetic energy change you have is equal to the final kinetic energy. Okay, you're starting from zero kinetic energy, going to some final kinetic energy. That final kinetic energy is the change. Okay, now, um, when we do this, uh, we find that uh, the delta Ke is one half mvf squared, and we solve for vf, and I should put a plus or minus in here, because actually without the plus or minus, the solution's not going to be valid in this case, because in this case, uh, the final velocity will be down the incline, which would be correspond to negative 3.1 meters per second. Okay, well, anyhow. Uh, so the final velocity is the square root of 2 ke over m, which is easily obtained here. And that's going to be plus or minus 2 times the delta w net divided by m because the change in kinetic energy is the, change, is the amount of work done on this interval. And we plug the numbers in. We do the calculation. Being careful about the units, remember a joule is a newton times a meter. A newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. So a joule is a kilogram meter squared per second squared. Divide that by a kilogram, we end up with meter squared per second squared. Be sure you understand that. Uh, I want to see complete unit calculations on any test and preferably on anything you submit. Okay? So if I've done the numbers correctly, I end up with a plus or minus 3.1 meters per second. And we choose the minus in this case because the object is going down the incline, which is negative direction. Uh, so in the plus or minus, choose the minus because of the situation. And there's our solution. Now we'll go on with, uh, with this in the next clip. Actually, I'll stay with it in this clip. Um, I think we've got a case where we need a V naught that's not equal to zero 
and we might take a look at that. We'll see. Okay, so net force uh, is the parallel component of the weight plus the frictional force. Anticipating the concept of potential energy. Uh, potential energy is uh, the change in potential energy turns out to be equal and opposite to the work done on a system by conservative forces. Now, work done on this system by conservative forces, the conservative force is the weight. We haven't talked about conservative versus non-conservative forces, so we're kind of pre-shadowing what we're going to talk about. But it's an important idea and one that gives people some difficulty. So I want to mention it at this point in this context. Okay, The work done by the parallel component of the weight, the weight is a component of the gravitational force. The gravitational force is a conservative force. Um, that is basically a force that acts the same when you're going in one direction as when you're coming back in the other direction. A um, little more involved than that. It's a path independent force and, and you know, we'll deal with that very shortly. So the parallel component of the work is conservative. Uh, this is then equal and opposite to what I just said was the change in potential energy. So this would be the negative change in potential energy and this is the work done by non-conservative forces. Um, we could rewrite this equation by setting all this equal to the change in kinetic energy. We would get the negative change in potential energy plus the work done by non-conservative forces equals the change in kinetic energy. And from that we would derive um, the more uh, um, general work energy theorem from the work kinetic energy theorem. Something I want you to think about, kind of make notes on that, just begin sorting out the idea. We'll make it rigorous uh, before long.